In this lecture, we show how to determine the equivalent resistance for an electrical network that contains resistors and dependent voltage or current sources. Well, in a previous lecture on equivalent resistance, we summarized the methods for determining the equivalent resistance for two or more resistors that are connected in series or in parallel and we provided a few examples to demonstrate how those methods could be used to reduce a complicated network of resistors to a single resistance. Well, now we'd like to look at a more general situation in which a network of electrical elements contains resistors and dependent voltage or current sources, but does not contain independent sources. Now, when a network contains dependent sources, we don't have a simple set of rules for combining elements that are in parallel or in series. But we can, however, use a generalization of Ohm's law to determine the equivalent resistance of the network. We might, for instance, supply the network with a known voltage V and then use our analysis methods to determine the current that would flow through the terminals and through the voltage source into the network and back out. I. The equivalent resistance then for this network, well that would be the ratio of the voltage we apply to the resulting current. Now, as an alternative, we might supply the network with a known current. So instead of connecting a voltage source, we'll connect a current source with some known current I, and then we'll measure the voltage that appears across the terminals. Again, the equivalent resistance for this network would be the ratio of the voltage that appears to the current that we've provided. Well now let's illustrate this method with a couple of examples of circuits that, that contain resistors and dependent sources. Well, let's take a look at a circuit that has a 5 ohm resistor in parallel with a dependent current source Who's, who, that provides a current that is half of the voltage across this 1 ohm resistor and what we'd like to do is determine the equivalent resistance for this circuit looking to the left of these two nodes. Well let's do this by attaching a known current source to the terminals and we could set this current to any value that we choose other than zero. So let's make this one amp of current and then we'll analyze the voltage that appears across these terminals and use that to determine the equivalent resistance. So if our current source provides one amp of current, then one amp of current will flow through this one ohm resistor. and That'll make the voltage across this resistor equal to one volt so we'll see one volt of voltage here and then this current source will provide one half of an amp of current. So if we have one amp of current flowing in this direction and one half amp flowing in this direction then we should see three halves of an amp of current flowing through this 5 ohm resistor and that's going to put well 3 halves times 5 that'll put 15 halves volts across this 5 ohm resistor so now the voltage from this node to this node would be 15 halves plus 1 so the voltage due to providing one amp of current into this circuit would be 15 halves plus 1. 
plus 1. So that would be 17 over 2 volts. And that means that the equivalent resistance, which would be the voltage that will appear across those nodes divided by the current that we're providing through them. So that'll be 17 halves divided by 1 and that'll leave us with 17 over 2 or 8 and a half ohms. Well here's another example. We have a circuit that has three resistors and a dependent voltage source and the dependent voltage source provides a voltage that is one half of the voltage across this 4 ohm resistor. So what we'd like to do is determine the equivalent resistance looking into these nodes for this circuit. And to do that, this time what I'll do is provide a known voltage. And again, this voltage could be anything other than zero, so let's provide one volt and then we'll measure the current that flows into this circuit. And we'll analyze the current that flows into this circuit. Now if I'm going to provide one volt between these two nodes, then this voltage, VR, well that's the same voltage, so that's going to be one volt. That means that VR over 2, this voltage source, will provide one half of a volt. And at that point, what I could do is use Kirchhoff's current law at this node. So the current flowing in this direction outward would be this voltage, which is from here to here, which is 1 volt divided by 4. And then the current flowing in this direction, well, we have 1 volt here, but we have a half a volt relative to this. We might call this our ground node here. So we have a half a volt here, 1 volt here, so we have 1 half a volt across this 4 ohm resistor. So we'll see the current flowing in that direction be 1 half over 4. Then the current flowing in this direction would be, again, 1 volt over 6 ohms. And the current flowing in is the unknown current I. And that all would be equal to 0. That means that this current I would be 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixth which would be 6 plus 3 plus 4 over 24 so that's going to be 13 over 24 amps. So then our equivalent resistance would be the voltage we've provided divided by the current that we see flowing into that circuit. We provide one volt of voltage in this case and we saw 13 24 amps of current so that's going to give us 24 over 13 ohms. So that's two examples that shows how we can provide either a known current or a known voltage and then measure the resulting voltage or current and determine the equivalent resistance for a circuit that, that contains resistors 
and dependent voltage or current sources.